Welcome back guys to another episode of Next Gen VR. Today HTC Vive announced two new VR headsets, the Vive Pro 2 and the Vive Focus 3. And in this video I want to go over all the specs of these two headsets and how they compare to existing VR headsets on the market and what you should consider before buying any one of these. So let's jump into the next generation. So first let's go over the Vive Pro 2. We have a VR headset that is 800 US dollars or 1080 Canadian dollars in my case. And it has two and a half K resolution per eye, which means 2448 times 2448 per eye, which they call 5K. It has 120 degrees field of view, which we don't know for sure if it's diagonal or horizontal. Sebastian from MRTV says that the president told him it's horizontal, but I will uh, try this headset for myself and let you guys know. Is this diagonal or is it horizontal? When I asked Mr. Graham Wheeler, the HTC president, he told me it's horizontal, but I will simply check that out for you. Then um, it has 120 hertz refresh rate and some other features like IPD adjustment and other standard features like that. It also supports the Vive wireless adapter, but only at 90 hertz mode and not at the full resolution. So on their website, they state that in a disclaimer um, for the Vive wireless adapter. They also debuting a Vive Focus 3, which is a standalone VR headset similar to the Quest 2 that's focused on Enterprise, which is 1,300 US or 1,750 Canadian. And this headset has um, inside out tracking with controllers and pretty much the same specs as the Vive Pro 2, just being wireless and standalone. Unfortunately though, it does not support Steam VR, and obviously it's oriented for business or enterprise only. So a while back I made a video about which VR headset should you buy, and I made a chart, and I've now updated this chart where I've replaced the Star VR 1 with the Vive Pro 2, since I don't think most of you guys are looking for a very expensive headset. And I've updated the values for the Pimax 5K Super with my input. So first let's start with the Vive Pro 2. It's $800 for the headset alone. It uses base station tracking. So with controllers and base stations, you're looking at about 1,300 if you buy from them, but you can probably save a bit if you buy from another source. Then we have 2448 times 2440 per eye versus Reverb G2's 2160 per eye. And we have a max field of view of possibly 120 degrees horizontal, at least as what the HTC president claims, but we don't know if they're being honest or not yet. So assuming it's horizontal, this is a significant bump from the Reverb G2, which is 98 horizontal, but keep in mind the Reverb G2 has 114 degrees diagonal. So we'll see if it's 120 horizontal or diagonal. And then 120 hertz refresh rate, much better than the Reverb G2. But one thing to keep in mind is the Vive Pro 2 again requires space station tracking, whereas Reverb G2 is inside out and standalone. And then compared to the Valve Index, which is also base station tracking, you can see the Vive Pro 2 is significantly better. And again, assuming it's horizontal FOV, it would be a significant bump from Valve Index. Assuming it's horizontal, this would be about small to normal FOV mode on the Pimax 8KX in comparison. So uh, I will, I've bought this headset, so I will let you guys know once I receive it, um, all these other stats. And then the Pimax 5K Super, I rate the comfort as nine out of 10. It is pretty comfortable. You don't really need counterweights. It feels lighter than the 8KX, or maybe that's just because I'm used to heavy headsets, but that's just my view. And then the contrast colors or brightness are similar to the 8KX. The sweet spot is pretty good. I feel it's, it's even better than the 8KX, but um, yeah. And then screen door effect is noticeable like the Valve Index. We have audio at nine out of 10. It's pretty good. I would still say the index speakers are better, but only marginally. So um, I think their DMOS is going to be even better than their KDMOS, so I'm really looking forward to, to that. Um, negative X-Hector, it's a bit lower in resolution, so kind of similar to the index. 
uh, compared to newer generation but again it's much lower in price it used to be 750 but now they have a discount program where you can get it for just 550 dollars their vr 2.0 program so you can go on their website to find out about that so overall this is the finalized chart for now again this chart will be constantly updated as i try new headsets and as i add more columns to this chart for new headsets that come out one important thing to keep in mind is that resolution is not everything you have to take a look at the field of view so even though the Pimax 8KX seems to have the highest resolution per eye, remember that this resolution is spread over a very wide field of view of 160 degrees horizontal and 124 vertical. So in my experience of the 8KX versus G2, the 8KX and G2 had similar resolution even though uh, the G2 has 2160 by 2160 because the FOV of the G2 is much smaller. So the smaller the FOV, the higher the pixel density. And overall, I noticed that the G2 is slightly sharper than the 8KX. So if the Vive Pro 2 has a wider FOV than the G2, but higher resolution than the G2, then I can see it being around probably sharper than the G2 and slightly bigger FOV is my best guess. But I'll have to try it out for myself to see. But my hunch is that the Vive Pro 2 might be higher pixel density than both the 8KX and the G2. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for many more videos and I'll see you guys next time.